What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of The Computer Scientist. Today we will be building an agent that uses the Q-learning algorithm to learn how to maximize its reward when playing through a simple environment in OpenAI Gym. So you may be wondering, what exactly is Q-learning? Well, let's start by looking at an example environment called Frozen Lake. So imagine a 4x4 grid world environment with 16 different states. Then we have an agent that can move around this environment by taking one of the four actions in any state. Move left, down, up or right. Now in a single episode, the agent starts in the top left corner and its goal is to reach the bottom right corner, but some of the squares are holes which terminate the episode if the agent falls in. So what the agent needs to do is to select an action in the current state which will take it to a next state and earn a reward of zero in all cases unless it reaches the goal state where it then receives a reward of 1 and the episode terminates. This becomes a lot easier if the agent tries to estimate the expected value of taking each action in each state. So let's say we have a table called a queue table with a row for each state and a column for each action. Then for each state action pair, we want to model the expected long term reward of taking that action in that state. So given some state ST and action AT, we could say the expected value of taking that action would be the sum of all the rewards in the following states, but of course we aren't as certain about the rewards further into the future, so we will apply an exponential discount rate to each time's reward. Now looking at the next state, st plus 1 and action at plus 1 pair, we can write the sum of the following discounted rewards in the similar way. Turns out that this is actually incorporated in the first pair being multiplied by an extra discount rate. So we can write the first state value in terms of the discounted next state's value. But we can actually simplify this more. If we think about what we would use this Q table for, we would want to select the action that has the highest expected value in that state. So then we can assume that the next state's action will be the action such that the Q value for that state action pair will be the maximum out of all available actions in that state. So we can replace this with the max Q value for the next state. So this essentially is the Q function that makes up Q learning. So we essentially want each element in our table to satisfy that equation. But since we are doing it the machine learning way, we will be starting with a random table and learn the Q values through small updates as we interact with the environment. So then we can think of the value derived from the Q function as the target value that we want to push our approximated Q values towards at some learning rate alpha. Okay, so now let's apply this to actual code in our agent. So we're back in our Jupyter Notebook from last video where we created a random agent that can simulate both discrete and continuous action spaces. So I'll put a link to that in the description in case you haven't seen it. We'll mainly be looking at the frozen lake environment in this video, so we can ignore these other ones. Then checking out the description for frozen lake on OpenAI Gym, we have the same environment I described earlier, except this one has slippery ice. So that means taking an action doesn't always lead to the same next state. Instead, we want the non-slippery version, which is simpler to solve. So we can just register a new version of that environment, which is not slippery by copying the original registration and changing the argument is slippery to false. So we need to just wrap this in a try block, otherwise running it again will cause a warning exception, which we don't really care about. We can do a random playthrough using this agent, but first we'll change the iteration loop to only run while the episode hasn't terminated, where done is false. We'll also print the state and action and pause for half a second so we can see the updates. But since env.render prints each new state after the last one, we will flush the notebook output after each step with the clear output command. Now to implement Q-learning, we will create a new class called QAgent that is a subclass of the random agent. We already have the action size defined in the parent class, so we just need to define the state size here and print it. Then we will define a new method for defining the Q-table as small random numbers with states as rows and actions as columns. Then we can redefine the getAction method to select an action based on the Q-values corresponding to the given state. So then the best action will be the index of the highest Q value, so we'll use np.argmax to get that. Finally, we define a train method for updating the Q table at each step, where we receive the tuple of experience that contains the state, action, next state, reward, 
and whether the episode terminates in the current state. So now for our queue function, we first need the queue values for the next state. However, only non-terminal states have a next state, so we will set these to zeros if the current state is terminal. We then calculate the target value according to the equation and we can define the discount rate from the constructor. Then we calculate the distance from the current Q value to the target and push it towards the target value at the learning rate which we can also define in the constructor. Now to adjust the simulation loop for training. So m.step returns the next state so we'll rename that and then call the train method from our agent passing in those five values. We then update the state to the next state. So we'll train over a number of episodes and also keep track of the cumulated reward. We'll also reduce the sleep time and then let's run it. Okay, so it looks like it keeps selecting the same actions and not training. So let's try printing the queue table to see what's going on. Looks like the agent is only selecting actions greedily based on the randomly initialized queue table and not exploring any of the other actions. So to fix this, we will introduce a variable for balancing exploring the full set of actions to selecting the actions from the queue learning policy using the queue table. So we'll call this variable epsilon, or eps for short, for representing the probability of prioritizing an exploratory action over a policy action and we'll initially set it to start as 1. So then in our getAction method we will also store the random exploratory action using the parent class where we will choose that action over the greedy one with a probability of epsilon. We also need to reduce epsilon as we learn the more optimal Q table after each episode. So in the train method, if the state is terminal we will apply an exponential decay to epsilon. So finally we'll just print epsilon and then run this again where we can see that it's now able to explore the entire space. Alright, so let's now watch it in two times speed. So we can also see that epsilon is gradually decreasing, which means that we are slowly favoring the queue table more than random actions. Okay, so after the first 100 episodes, we got about 13 cumulative reward. Let's run it again and see if we can get more this time. Okay, so it looks like we've already reached our previous 100 episodes reward. So we can see that we're gradually getting more reward faster and faster as it's following the optimal policy. So that's a simple implementation of queue learning to enable an agent to learn how to maximize its reward in a discrete environment. In the next video, we'll apply the same approach using a neural network in TensorFlow to model the Q function. Anyways, thanks so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, be sure to give it a like, and I'll see you next time. Bye!